you. Hello, Ben. Thanks for coming by today. It's my pleasure. I've been looking forward to it. Well, good. Well, uh, we're looking forward to finding out uh, uh, more about you and your history and, um, and your desires for running for the uh, school board. That's good. I'd love to talk about all of the above. Uh, <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your, your history with Carrieville. Well, I uh, moved to Collierville two years ago. I am a native Nephian. I lived in Germantown 10 years prior to my moving to Collierville. And I, mm -hmm. in October of 2010, I moved to Collierville and have been very happy here ever since. Well, well that's great. Uh, so uh, how did how did it come about, you deciding to run for the, uh, the school board? I am a retired school administrator and currently a college professor. When the issue came up of Collierville forming its own school system, it uh, occurred to me that I have something to offer. I've got an educational background in my career. Uh, my degrees are all in education. And I've served as a teacher and administrator, and since I'm now retired, I've got the time to devote to this job, and this is going to be a very heavy, time-demanding job. So I have offered myself as a candidate for the school board position five. Well, that's great. Um, uh, tell us a little bit more about your, uh, your history with education and, and your degrees you spoke of. Well, I'm a native. Uh, Mithian and I went to public schools all my life, elementary through Memphis State University. I got a bachelor's degree in secondary education at Memphis State, certified to teach in three areas. Three years later, I got a master's degree in administration and supervision from Memphis State, became licensed as an administrator, and I'm licensed as a K-12 administrator in three states, Miss, uh, Tennessee, Mississippi, and Texas. I taught eight years from the middle school to the high school level, and then I went to Michigan State University, and there I got another master's degree in secondary education and a PhD in educational administration and curriculum. So I, I have uh, the degrees to, to support my contention for the school board. I was principal of four types of schools. I was principal of the school, a K-12 school inside Wilder Youth Development Center, a maximum security facility for juveniles, so I have familiarity with correctional education. I was a principal of <coughs> the Rutherford County Alternative School in Murfreesboro, so I have uh, experience and sensitivity for the at-risk student and uh, that educational environment. I moved back to Memphis and I was the assistant principal at Oak Haven High School, which is a 712 traditional high school. And my last 11 years, I retired about a year and a half ago, was spent or were spent at Kansas Career and Technology Center in the Memphis City School System. So I have experience with vocational education. So I bring strong educational experience in the public schools, educational experience mm -hmm. in teaching in the public schools, educational degrees. Uh, I was a principal for 25 years. I teach at the University of Memphis. I teach sociology since 1988 at the University of Memphis, an associate professor out there. Uh, and then I also teach teachers how to teach at the Memphis campus of Haven University. It's a Presbyterian college based in Jackson, Mississippi. So I'm still teaching at the university level. I've taught from the, the junior high to the educational graduate level. So I think I'm more than qualified to sit on this board mm -hmm. and help launch a new school system. Um, the, the board's going to face a lot of decisions. And, and board members, it's going to need a board that has a diverse background. And you certainly bring an educational background to the board. I mean, you would have a context to understand a lot of things about a school superintendent, for example. Um, now, some people might say that that your context is all in education, and maybe that's a weakness for you. 
to be on the board? Uh, or does a board need somebody with an educational context if they have a superintendent? What would be your perspective? Well, the, the question is perceptive, but the answer is that we do need somebody on the board who is experienced as an educational administrator. I've sat in the principal's office for 25 years. I know how schools work from the inside out. I've been a building level principal. I know what principals need. I know what teachers need. Uh, the people should understand, voters should understand that the Board of Education is not an administrative body. It's a policy making body. We don't run schools. One of the first responsibilities, the first responsibility that we'll have as a board is to select a superintendent. The superintendent is the administrator of the school system. And that individual will put together the system and how we work. We will determine policy, budget, and so forth about the, as the overall governing body, but we're not administrators. My background is diverse also because I have been a Memphis police officer. I was a full-time cop in a patrol car for four years. I was the only police officer in the history of the department to be in a patrol car with a PhD. <laughs> <laughs> and, I w and I was also trained as a hostage negotiator. And I'm very pleased to say, too, that while I was there, I was selected by my fellow recruits as president of the recruit class, and I was awarded the Life Saving Medal while I was on the department. They waived three years of a five-year service requirement for me to become a negotiator, and I was able to talk a man out of killing himself one night. So I've got a diverse background. Moreover, I am trained by FEMA at their uh, school academy in Emmitsburg, Maryland, as an instructor for trainers in emergency planning and management. So I've got that FEMA certification. So I have a sense of academia from the classroom, from the principal's office, mm -hmm. from the law enforcement and security point of view because I've been a cop. I was a reserve for 20 years after four years of service. So I've been a cop and I know what it takes to keep a school secure in that environment. And I've got FEMA training. And I'm well aware that what do we do now is not an appropriate emergency plan. <laughs> so schools need to put in place, which they, they do, but they need to have in place and rehearse and practice their emergency management plans. Because as I said, what do we do now is not an appropriate emergency plan. So I've got a diverse background. I bring more to the board than just uh, being a principal. So uh, how can you put your hostage negotiating skills to work uh, at the board level? I put my <laughs> hostage negotiating <laughs> skills to work with parents on an almost daily basis, <laughs> being a principal uh, of four different kinds of schools. Uh, it's, it's all part of, of human nature. It's all the, the golden rule. Treat people as you want to be treated and listen. And this is a skill that I would take to the board. Listen to what people are saying. Let them finish their thought so you can understand what they're really asking and what the real issue is. Because sometimes anger or, or concern, being disconcerted, will mask the real purpose. So the negotiating skills that I learned as a nego hostage negotiator with the Memphis Police Department, I think will, will come into play. It's a good sensitivity program and board members if they don't do anything else, they need to listen. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be controversy on the board about some subject. And, and there's going to be people on both sides. And there's nothing wrong with that because we have a, a diverse community. And uh, this could be about anything, education, uniforms, school lunches, whatever. So in a situation where there's conflict, um, what style of leadership would you lead with, or do you have the habit of leading with? Now, all the school board <coughs> members, I think, are going to be a leader. They're going to have different styles, but everybody's got their own style. How would you describe yours? I am a principle-centered, participatory leader. You don't lead by charisma. 
you don't lead is not necessarily management by objective. It's principle-centered. Everything must be based on principle and integrity. And a participatory leader because I always felt, I still feel strongly, if you want to know how to do the job right, get in there amongst them that does the job and listen to them and they'll tell you how best to get the job done. So you get in amongst your people and you all move together rather than out front saying, follow me. Mm -hmm. And you listen uh, with a controversial subject. First, uh, you, you have to keep in mind, nothing's first. You need to do all simultaneously. You need to talk with the superintendent. You need to talk with the parties involved in whatever the issue may be uh, who are at the heart of the matter. You talk to the interested parties. And uh, barring a legal issue, uh, like uniforms, for example, you need to have community input, and that's not just a euphemism. You really need to have, as I've stressed, listen, but have community input. See what the people who send their children to the schools really want. Then you work out a compromise, and you have a, a timetable to where it can be phased in, rather than telling people, well, this is how it is, and that's the way it's going to be. Th that won't work. Participatory, listen, and in integrate your, your movements and your issues that you want to implement. Mm -hmm. Choosing a school superintendent is going to be a, <coughs> a big deal for the board. Indeed. Um, and I'm assuming that there'll be three or four finalists, and their resumes are all going to look fine. They're all going to have some experience. They're all going to be qualified as educators. Uh, is there anything at this point in time that would attract you to one over another? or something that you would look at and say, this is the kind of school superintendent I think Carterville would need? I think that we should try to stay local if we can and get someone who is familiar with Collierville schools. I would look for an individual who has been an administrator in preferably uh, as many situations as possible. I would look for someone who's got a demonstrated track record of success and community relations, a person who has demonstrated that they can work well with the community because we can't do this by ourselves. We've got to have community involvement mm -hmm. and as much of it as we can, so I'd want a superintendent with that demonstrated track record. We're looking for someone who is a cool head and has strong interpersonal skills. As I just said about what I think a board member should have and how a board member should be, you've got to listen to your constituency or your parents. And someone who has that skill, good strong personal skills, strong background, preferably an advanced degree. I, I would like to have someone who holds a doctorate level uh, in education, so a strong educational background, strong experiential background, strong interpersonal skills, demonstrated track record with community relations. What would you do in this situation? Uh, let's say you're elected and a year from now somebody comes up to you and says, uh, little Johnny doesn't like his teacher and I don't like his teacher either and, and I voted for you and I want you to do something about that. Uh, what, what, what would you do in a situation like that? I would, uh, first of all, ask the parent, or the constituent, what, what's the problem? Talk to me about the problem. Because then I would say, you must understand, I don't run a school. And I'm not going to go into a school and attempt to pressure anybody. What I do need to know, what I would do, would be to have your concerns and relay those to the superintendent. And the superintendent will then address the issue. And I would stress with the parent, I, I do not want you to think, I'm saying, oh no, it's hands off. I will convey your concerns, because you've got, obviously you've got concerns, but I'll convey them through the proper channels. Because I would not, when I was a principal, I didn't want a board member coming in and, so to speak, leaning on me. And that, that denigrates the role of a board member, it denigrates the role of the principal, it's insulting and plain aggravating to the administrator. There are channels to handle that. And then I would tell that parent, I will follow up with you 
this is not the end of the matter mm -hmm. until something is resolved uh, in your, your concerns. But that's how I would handle that. You mentioned earlier that, that you'd like the school superintendent to have a doctorate in education, is that right? That's correct. Uh, what's the next level below that and why is that level the, the correct one in your mind? What, what does the community gain? Well, let me tell you, to, to scaffold, as we say in education, to build up to make a point. Because you know I don't know what I'm talking about, right? Precisely. Just go ahead, please. And most people don't, <laughs> so they, they just want to know. I've got, in this sense, I'm every man in your question. I've got a bachelor's degree in secondary education. I'm trained at the bachelor's level to be a teacher. I've got a master's degree in administration and supervision. I'm trained to be an administrator, licensed to be an administrator. That's all you need. That's your, your entry level to be a principal or a superintendent. And uh, then I've got a second degree in secondary, master's degree in secondary ed, which is further study in secondary ed. And I've got a PhD in education, administration, and curriculum. Now, PhD or EDD, either one, is demonst it demonstrates a couple of things. It demonstrates the individual's commitment to the extreme utmost in their personal development. You can't go any further than a, than a PhD or mm -hmm. an EDD. It's, that's a terminal degree. It's what's called a terminal degree. Now you can do postdoc study, postdoctoral, but if you've got the doctorate, you have demonstrated to everyone concerned that you have a, a fire in your belly to be all you can be in your career. You have done all the professional development and personal development that one can get. Mm -hmm. you, have, you have said, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. So it demonstrates a higher level, not just a higher degree, but a higher level of desire to be the most effective administrator that you can be. And it also, in going through a doctorate, I can tell you from personal experience, in going through a doctoral program, your studies are diverse and they're intense. You learn how to be a scholarly researcher. So you can find for yourself whatever it is that you may need to know in a given situation. So the doctorate indicates a person who has stepped up to bat and stepped up to bat yet again. Mm -hmm with personal and professional commitment. Besides hiring the school superintendent, what would be some other issues you think the school board members will face that are significant? We're going to, first of all, uh, we're going to face funding. And the Kappa Delta Pi, Pi Delta Kappa magazine, Pi Delta Kappa Honor Society in Education, has a magazine, Pi Delta Kappa, and they conduct for the last 15 or 20 years the annual Gallup poll on educational issues. And the number one educational issue now is funding. It's not safety anymore. Safety, I think, is third. Hmm. So funding is uh, the top issue of concern for everybody. Given a weak economy, as we've been suffering through uh, the budget and how much it's going to take to run our own school system. Uh, and I've been asked the question, do you think the, the tax that we've approved is going to be enough? I don't know. What I would want people to know is that we'll do the best we can with what we've got. We may have to come back and ask for more. But it's like anything, with everyone's personal budget, you can't spend more than you make. And when you embark on something like buying a new home, or a, a, an, an investment in your own personal life, sometimes you may not budget appropriately because things happen. It's the law of, unin, feels law of unintended results. Mm -hmm. Something may come up and you, that you didn't anticipate. So the issue of funding is going to be, uh, after selecting a superintendent, is going to be the overriding issue. Uh, academic quality maintaining because we've got superior schools already. So are there any changes in your mind right now as you look at the existing schools that are in Carterville that you would say, hmm, I think this would be a good change? And, and we only have a minute left, but I mean, is it school food? Is it recess or sports? I mean, is there anything in your mind that you'd say, hmm, this would be a good change, I think? No, 
What's uppermost in my mind is we've got an excellent school system. We need to maintain the integrity of our teachers and the instruction and the learning environment for the kids that we've got now and improve it. Always constantly working to improve. Provide professional development for teachers to make them the best they can be and a safe and high-tech high environment for our students in Collierville. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for being willing to, uh, to be a public servant and for running for this position. You're welcome. Have a great day. Thank you, sir. Thank you.